Hello and welcome back to Global Value. In today's video, we're performing a fundamental stock analysis of Thermo Fisher Scientific Inc., ticker symbol TMO. So we're looking at Thermo Fisher today as a subscriber request. Currently, the business trades for $559.44 per share. Over the last year, their stock price is pretty much flat. They're only down 1.5%. Over the last five years, it's a completely different story. Thermo Fisher is compounding their stock price at a rate of 21% annually. Over 10 years, they're compounding their stock price Price at a rate of 21.5% annually. And going back prior to the global financial crisis, Thermo Fisher Scientific has compounded their stock price over the last 18 years at about 18% compounded annually. Their performance over this time is massively outpacing that of the S&P 500. Thermo Fisher is currently about $60 below their 52-week high. The business is up slightly more than $85 from their 52-week low. Thermo Fisher is a very large business. They have a $211.5 billion market cap. So for additional background about the business, Thermo Fisher Scientific sells scientific instruments and laboratory equipment, diagnostics, consumables, and life science reagents. The firm operates through four segments as of mid-2022. Revenue figures include some cross-segment revenue, but analytical technologies are about 15% of sales. Specialty diagnostic products make up 10% of sales. Life science solutions include about 30% of sales. And lab products and services, which include CRO services, comprise about 51% of sales. The company offers products and services through a direct sales force, customer service professionals, electronic commerce, third-party distributors, and catalogs. It also has a strategic alliance with the University of California, San Francisco. Francisco, and Thermo Fisher Scientific was incorporated in 1956 and is based in Waltham, Massachusetts. So for our fundamental analysis today, we are performing the Select 6 analysis, taking a checklist-style approach of six standard financial metrics to come to a holistic and beginning understanding of Thermo Fisher Scientific based off of their business fundamentals. So this analysis is still a work in progress, and it's an opportunity to learn in public, so it will continue to improve and get better over time. With that said, let's get right into today's analysis of Thermo Fisher Scientific. So so starting things off with metric number one, we want their average return on capital over the last five years to be above 14%. And there are two key reasons for this. The first is that over the long run, over the course of decades, a stock is likely to return approximately what its underlying business returns. And these business returns are going to be captured here by return on capital. The second is that the average publicly listed business earns about a 7% return on capital. So by looking for a benchmark of 14% or higher here, we can potentially build in some margin of safety for ourselves based off the overall quality of the business being about twice as good as average. Thermo Fisher has increased their returns on capital over this time frame. Their returns on capital were just very slightly above average in fiscal 2018 and fiscal 2019. They saw a pretty big jump relatively in their fiscal 2020, although they have been declining since then. So over this time frame, over the last five years, Thermo Fisher Scientific averages about a 10.5% average return on capital. So while that is a few percentage points above the returns of a typical business, that's below that 14% benchmark we're looking for. And so unfortunately, this is an X to start things off here on metric number one. Next up for metric number two, we're taking a high level overview of the growth of the business. So we're looking for revenue, net income, and free cash flow growth over the last five years. And this metric is going to be all or nothing in nature. Either all three of these are going to be up for this to be a check, or if even one of these is down, this entire metric will be an X. So over this time frame, Thermo Fisher has seen pretty strong growth in their revenues. They've increased by 84%. Their earnings have more than doubled and their free cash flows are up 83%. So this is very strong growth across the board here for the business. This is our first check of the day coming in here on metric number two. It's great to see that their earnings and their free cash flows have grown so much, especially in lockstep with their revenues. And so this is strong growth for the business especially given the fact that they're earning above average returns on capital throughout this time frame. Next up for metric number three, here we're taking the perspective of an individual shareholder in the business by looking at Thermo Fisher Scientific on a per share basis. So we're looking for earnings per share growth over the last five years for the business. As we learned in our previous metric, their earnings have more than doubled over this time frame. We still want to look at what they've done in terms of their shares outstanding, however. And over the last five years, Thermo Fisher has bought back about 3% of their shares outstanding. With their share buybacks and their strong earnings growth, this has led to strong earnings per share growth here for the business. In their most recent fiscal year, the company earned $17.63 for each share that they had outstanding. Next up, metric number four is going to be very similar. So here we're looking for free cash flow per share growth over the last five years for the business. As we previously learned, their free cash flows have grown by more than 83% over this time frame. And with their slight share buybacks, this again has led to strong free cash flow per share growth for Thermo Fisher. This is another check here on metric number four. And so far to recap where we stand currently, 
Through our first four metrics, we have three checks and only one X for the business. Next up for metric number five, here we're evaluating how the business is utilizing debt. So we don't want to be investing in overly levered businesses because during economic downturns, it's overly levered businesses that are going to be at the greatest risk of poor outcomes. So we want their net debt, which is their total debt minus their cash and their short term investments to be below the amount of free cash flow that the business has produced over their last five years. Thermo Fisher currently has a $27.6 billion net debt position, and they added on to their net debt pretty significantly over this time frame. Most of this was because of their $17.4 billion acquisition of PPD Inc., which was a leading global provider of clinical research services to the biopharma and biotech industry, which the business completed in December of 2021. So that is why their net debt position increased so much over this time frame. Since then, they've been paying down their net debt sum, and still over this five-year time frame, Thermo Fisher Science Scientific has produced $28.3 billion worth of free cash flow, meaning that although they're near the high end for this metric here of what we're looking for, it does look like their free cash flows are able to support their debt position. And this is going to be a check here on metric number five. Also worth being aware of is that the company has produced the most free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year that they have of any of these previous five years. So if we were to extrapolate their current free cash flows out over the next five years, they would also very healthily and very easily be able to support this net debt position. So it looks like the business business is using a reasonable and appropriate amount of leverage. Then for our sixth and final metric, the big metric of them all, we want their average free cash flow to their total enterprise value to give us a yield that's above 5%. If this is the case, this will potentially offer us a reasonable starting point for evaluation of Thermo Fisher Scientific and potentially offer a slight risk premium to the yield of the 10-year treasury. So we learned in our previous metric that the company has produced $28.3 billion worth of free cash flow over their last five fiscal years. And currently the business has a $239 billion total enterprise value. We're using their enterprise value because it takes into account both their market cap and their net debt position. And it's going to give us a perspective of the business that's more similar to as if Thermo Fisher were a private company. So in an average year, Thermo Fisher produces $5.66 billion worth of free cash flow. And so when we divide their $5.66 billion of their average free cash flow by their $239 billion total enterprise value, that only gives us about a 2.3% average free cash flow to enterprise value yield. So that's less than half of that 5% risk premium we'd ideally be seeking. And that's also coming in below the yield of the 10-year treasury as well, meaning that on the basis of their average free cash flows, this is going to be an X here on metric number six. Also worth being aware of is again, we pointed out that their free cash flows have increased over their past year and Thermo Fisher produced $6.9 billion worth of free cash flow in their most recent fiscal year. So to get a current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business, when we divide their $6.9 billion of their most recent fiscal year's worth of free cash flow by their $239 billion total enterprise value, that is only going to give us about a 2.9% current free cash flow to enterprise value yield for the business. So that yield is also below the yield of the 10-year treasury and below that 5% risk premium as well. So on both a current and an average basis here, this is an X on metric number six for Thermo Fisher Scientific. Just because this is the case, however, doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to toss this business out in its entirety. This is just one of our six metrics, and these metrics are meant to be taken in holistically. Although they are simple, when they're combined together, they can be quite powerful. This might be our last metric, but you'll want to stick around until the end of the video because we've still got some interesting things left to cover. As a bonus, here we're taking a look at Thermo Fisher's Scientific's dividend profile. So currently, the business is paying out a very small 0.22% dividend yield. So this is a very slight dividend yield. However, we still want to look at any company's dividend payouts to determine whether they look like they're healthy and sustainable going forward into the future. Thermo Fisher has increased their dividend payouts in all five of these years, and they managed to grow their dividends per share by a reasonable growth rate here. So it does look like the company is potentially a dividend growth company in some capacities, and that their dividends were very healthily and very easily supported by their free cash flows per share in all five of these years. Even with their increasing dividend payouts, it still looks like the business is paying out a very, very modest and very sustainable dividend payout ratio currently. So this is a snap snapshot of their last five years of performance, and it's not necessarily a guarantee for the future. It would seem, however, that their dividend looks like it's in pretty good shape. Everything we've discussed so far is important, but there's something missing that, in my opinion, is the main reason to analyze Thermo Fisher Scientific, which takes us on to using a discounted cash flow model to come to a potential fair intrinsic value for the business. So a discounted cash flow model is just like any other model in any other discipline. Its outputs are going to be sensitive to its inputs. So here we're starting with their current free cash flows per share, and we're using historical growth assumptions dating back all 
all the way till 1990 in order to project these out into the future. So it's up to you to do your own homework here to determine whether or not these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward to give us a baseline projected estimate for Thermo Fisher Scientific over their next 20 years. However, if we assume that the business grows their free cash flows at a rate of 11% annually for the next 10 years, and then during the 10 years out after that, this growth rate is cut in half to only 5.5% annually, we won't be adding in the company's tangible book value today. However, if we were seeking a 15% rate of return from the business, which is the rate of return that Warren Buffett is ideally looking for from his investments, in addition to his requirements for margin of safety, which depends on both the industry dynamics that the company operates in, as well as the business's competitive positioning, and how strong a potential durable competitive advantage is for the business, then it looks like from today's valuations of the company that a potential fair intrinsic value for Thermo Fisher Scientific is around $224 per share. So this would be significantly below what their current stock price is, down by more than half of their current stock price. Keep in mind that a discounted cash flow model is predicated based off the predictability of a business's future free cash flows. And while Thermo Fisher Scientific has tended to have very high business predictability in its past, especially relative to some other types of businesses, that may not necessarily be the case going forward for the company. So it's worth digging in here if you want to understand more. Please be mindful of the fact that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with the properly licensed and registered legal and financial professionals. In just a minute, we'll talk about our summary for Thermo Fisher Scientific, but we have to address something first. What are some of the qualitative aspects of this business, especially those that support the key points for either a potential long or a potential short thesis of the company? So starting with some of the key points around a potential long thesis for Thermo Fisher. Number one, Thermo Fisher is successfully implementing price hikes within its portfolio, offsetting inflationary pressures. Number two, it's viewed that the recent PPD acquisition is very positive as it fills one of the very few remaining gaps in the company's offering. And number three, the company's PCR test windfall was massive, but has also led to market share gains within the instrumentation base. Then for some of the key points around a potential short thesis of the company, number one, while a small portion currently, this firm's presence in the industrial end market exposes it to macroeconomic headwinds. Number two, the firm will face significant headwinds from COVID-19 revenue fading in late 2022 and 2023. While vaccines may make up some of the shortage, the drop-off may be material. And number three, the company was able to fuel its acquisition spree via access to extremely inexpensive debt, generating excess returns on acquisitions in a current less favorable interest rate environment environment might be more challenging. So hopefully that offers a potentially balanced perspective around some of the key qualitative aspects of Thermo Fisher's business. Now it's time for our wrap up. So in summary, Thermo Fisher Scientific checks the box on four out of our six metrics today. This means that the business looks like a strong candidate for further research. Although the company earns above average returns on capital, they were a few percentage points below that 14% benchmark we're looking for. Thermo Fisher has grown their revenues, earnings, and free cash flows pretty strongly over the last five years. They were a beneficiary of the COVID-19 global pandemic, and they also bought back about 3% of their shares outstanding over this time frame. They've had strong per share growth as well. Then with a big acquisition of PPD in 2021, the company did add to its net debt profile, but it still looks like the business's free cash flows are able to comfortably support their net debt position. However, on a current and an average basis of their free cash flow to enterprise value yield, when we compared those to the yield of the 10-year treasury. It does not look like the company would currently be giving us that risk premium we'd ideally be seeking. Looking at the business's dividends, although they pay out a very small dividend yield and they have a very slight dividend payout ratio, they have grown their dividends over the last five years and they're very well supported by the company's current free cash flows and their free cash flows have grown over this time frame as well. Finally, performing a discounted cash flow analysis of Thermo Fisher Scientific. If you've done the work and you believe that these historical growth assumptions are going to be accurate and applicable going forward for the future of the company, then it looks like from today's valuations of Thermo Fisher Scientific, if you were seeking a 15% rate of return, that a potential fair intrinsic value for the company would be around $224 per share. That would be very significantly down from what the company's current stock price is. The last time the business traded at that price was back in December of 2018. So if that's the case for you, you would just want to be patient as you dig in and learn more about the company. It's worth reiterating that this type of analysis is not financial advice. It's not a buy or sell recommendation of any security. And before considering any potential investment decision, please consult with your financial advisor. This analysis instead serves as a beginning and holistic understanding to help you determine whether it's worth your time and energy to dig in and learn more about Thermo Fisher. So as a value investor, you're ultimately trying to conduct this research as if you're going to own 100% of a business and you can truly understand the ins and outs of that company and understand what's important and what's not as you research the business accurately, completely, and then go back and ask yourself, what did you miss? 
in order to come to understand the underlying essence of the business. So through this deeper research, you'll learn more about the qualitative and the quantitative aspects of the company, and you'll likely be able to determine for yourself what a reasonably appropriate intrinsic value for the company will be. So with that said, that's it for today's fundamental stock analysis of Thermo Fisher Scientific Inc., ticker symbol TMO. Again, we looked at the business as a subscriber request, and with the company checking the box on four of our six metrics, it looks like Thermo Fisher Scientific is strongly attractive for further research. So I'm happy to make an analysis of the company, and if you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel for more stock analysis videos, and comment down below what business you want me to take a look at next time. Thanks for learning about Thermo Fisher with me, and have a great day.